Hello YouTube, today I've got the third episode, if you count the first one that wasn't really quite an episode, of the, um, the sort of realism type series. In this one I'm actually going to try and launch the first rocket. So we're going to go with the Mark 1, um, the Mark 1 command pod, and a little parachute as well. We're going to have to deal with deadly re-entry too, so I'm going to try and uh, try and grab a... where are they? Here we are, a heat shield. So I think it's a 1.25 meter heat shield that we need just like that. Just there, that's good. Um, I don't think there is any sort of specific one for this. So let's see. Um, and these heat shields, uh, sorry, these decouplers here, I believe, help a little bit with making it look a bit neater with the heat shield. So we're going to use one of those. Anyway, so this, this decoupler you see in the staging menu, I'd just like to point out, is actually the heat shield itself because it can split itself off, which it will probably do. Look at this. An inflatable heat shield and it's 6.25 meters that's kind of crazy anyway um, I wonder if we should put a fairing on this just to so that I can show you guys the fairings hmm that might be an idea what I'm actually gonna do first of all is attach a few other little bits because for example in I think it was the Mercury missions, I'm not 100% sure on that, don't quote me. They had little RCS tanks and things on the pods. Um, and they actually did all the orbital maneuvers with RCS. And this is a perfect opportunity for me to show off the new engines, the orbital maneuvering engine things. So I'm going to use a couple of those maybe. Maybe I should just use the normal linear RCS things. So let's have a thrust of one, <laughs> whereas the orbital maneuvering system engines have a thrust of 20. Let's go with these then. It should be a little bit more powerful. Kind of that angle might work. So I'm trying to get them at a good, good angle because these things are kind of ugly looking if they're not a good angle. There we go. Um, that should work all right. And then we've got our heat shield there and we've got... Yeah, I don't think this looks good. I think we, we should just use the normal RCS ports, but the linear ones. Um, I have to put them on the bottom. Those will probably burn up on re-entry, but that's okay. I don't think the heat shield will protect those, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, can we actually attach this? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. I wonder if we attach these to here. Just like that. And then we attach the heat shield, whether well, those will still work. That's something we should test. But we can't really rely on it, can we? So that's not a good idea. Um, Maybe if I just stick them kind of like this. I think we only need four. Yeah, that looks cool. I can deal with that. So we just need the 1.25 meter heat shield. And then this decoupler. There we go. So we should have some thrust there so that this can do some orbital stuff, which should be good and fun and everything. So I think, um, I think from there, all we need is a rocket to get it to orbit. I don't think we need anything else. So we're going to have our orbiter, oh, start with a capsule over there, orbiter mark one. And I guess we, sh we could put a fairing on this. I mean, it might look cool. Uh, let's have a look then. So we can change the size of this, 1.25 is the default size for this. I wonder if we use one of these whether it will make it look a bit nicer, there we go. So it gives you a bit more um, 
makes this look a bit nicer I guess let's put the egg shaped fairing on there we go that's how procedural fairings works it's really simple and really quite good I'm actually not going to use that I don't think we need one of those um, but what we do need is for now at least those are too big we don't need that uh, we do need the Kerbal Engineer attachment just one of them should be enough I'm going to stick that on, and then if I open that up, we'll see. It doesn't actually say the delta V of this stage, which is kind of a annoying, I guess, because it would be nice to see the delta V of these things. But what it should show us is the delta V of the rocket, and it takes about four kilometers a second of delta V with Ferrum Aerospace installed to get to orbit, three and a half, four kilometers a second. So, we're going to build something that can do that. We're not going to go with a solid rocket booster, because in real life those create lots of vibrations and things, which aren't very nice um, if they're close to the people in the rocket. And we're not trying to kill the Kerbals, it just happens. So, let's go with a more standard rocket. Um, and I'll go with the T-45. There we go, that's, that's two and a half kilometers a second of Delta V already. Now, I can make this stage bigger though, because if we look, this is interesting, this is where Kerbal Engineer really comes into play. For a lifting stage or a launch stage, you want a thrust to weight ratio of larger than about 1.2, maybe 1.5 would be a good place to start. And we're already at 2.5 though, so we can add some fuel to this. To bring that thrust to weight ratio down to something reasonable, and we'll, we'll just get more delta V which is always good. So there we go, now we've got three and a half thousand and a thrust to weight ratio of 1.6. And actually, I think that rocket could probably take us all the way to orbit with Ferrum Aerospace installed. So I'm gonna stick on a few of these to make it look a bit cooler and to give us some control. The control bit's the most important bit about that. And yeah, then we can activate that, split off that, use the RCS and do whatever we want in orbit then come back down. The RCS is more to deorbit with. And then we've got the parachute and the split off of the, um, the heat shield. So, I think that's about it. Um, I'm not really 100% sure, but I think we're about there. Uh, so, let's give this a shot. I'm actually going to get rid of the... Oh no, I'm not. I'm going to leave that on. We'll keep using it. It does look kind of cool, and it does help a little bit. So, let's get on here. And you'll see the flight engineer um, little window here is kind of useful. It gives us all our orbital info if we want it. Um, but what I'm going to use is the vessel info, because that gives us our thrust to weight ratios, our thrust, our mass, and our delta V, most importantly. And it says our delta V is only that, but that's because we're at the um, we're in the atmosphere, so our ISP, or our specific impulse, is only 320. That delta V will actually go up as our altitude increases, although it will go down because we're burning fuel, of course, as well. Anyway, let's take off. If anything goes wrong, we've got a parachute, we're okay. Um, and you'll see the ISP is already going up there. And once we get to a vacuum, the ISP will hopefully be 3,500. Well, the ISP, sorry, will hopefully be about 370. The delta V that we would have had in total would have gone up to about 3,500 from 3,000. And the first thing we're going to do is turn off SAS and pitch over to around 5, 10 degrees. And this is actually what we're going to do. It's, a, it's actually going to be a proper gravity turn, I hope, if it doesn't wobble too much. Uh, we may have too high a thrust to weight ratio, I don't know. We may be going a bit too fast, really, for this. But in a proper gravity turn, it might work better if you're using um, realism overhaul. But yeah, in a proper gravity turn, the gravity is actually going to pull you over um, and pitch you pitch you over, and um, you don't actually need to put any inputs at all. And I've done it in realism overhaul once. I tried it out properly, and it actually worked really, really nicely. Um, you end up with a really good orbit. But I think in this, the, it doesn't quite scale properly, so it doesn't work too well. For some reason, we don't have that much control over our rocket. Um, got a lot of roll. 
and not a lot of control. Let's just see where our apoapsis is. 53 already, that's kind of bad, so we need to pitch over some more. I think we pitched over a bit too late to start off with, so that was not a problem there. Anyway, we still got 1,600 meters a second of delta V, and we're already going at about 1,000, and orbital velocity, as you may, you may know, is about 2,300. So, we should actually be able to do this fairly easily. Um, so now we've already got the apoapsis, unfortunately the orbit isn't too flat out. Um, I'm still kind of getting used to controlling the rockets with Ferrum Aerospace. Because um, it's a little bit different, you need to be a bit more careful. And I don't think those, uh, those, I guess, winglets gave us too much in terms of control. But anyway, now we're actually pretty much in space, I think. So our specific impulse is 370 now, so we're a bit more efficient. Uh, so we can afford to burn. And we should just about have enough delta V. Um, if you remember that we also have the RCS at the end to do the last couple meters a second. Because we don't have much mass as well when we run onto the RCS, so it should be okay. And yeah, we might have to do maybe 100 meters a second or so of burning when we've got the RCS. But that's not a big deal at all. We can do that. So let's just circularize the orbit as much as we can with this fuel that we have. And there we go, you can see we're nearly, nearly there. So I'm going to split this off, turn on the RCS and hit H, and that's going to start to um, circularize our orbit a little bit more. You can see it's actually doing something, so that's always good. Let's see. And we've got plenty of time as well to do this, because our orbit's already nearly circular. And we just need to bring the periapsis up above um, there. And there we go, that's us done periapsis and the apoapsis are jiggling about a lot, which means that they're very, very close in altitude. And we've still got quite a lot of RCS, I think. If I bring up the resources menu, we've still got 103 out of 110. So we could do quite a lot of orbital maneuvering with this, which I think is kind of cool. So that's something you may not have known that you could do in Kerbal Space Program, but you can do. And we may as well go for a little EVA as well, maybe take a screenshot. Um, I need to start using the screenshots that I take for for the, uh, what would you call it, for like the thumbnails for the videos, I need to do that. But we're okay. So yeah, if you have like a little stage like this, um, maybe add a bit of RCS to it. It probably won't take away that much delta V, and I'll add a lot in the sense that you can do some more fun stuff when you're in orbit if you want to maybe go into a higher orbit or a lower orbit slightly, um, it can help with that without actually having a rocket engine, which is always a good thing. It's more more useful when you're using the realism overhaul or something, because or in real life basically, because in real life um, having a rocket engine is a bit of a pain because you, restarting it and things is not easy, so monopropellant is used a lot. Just like on the space shuttle, I guess, the orbital maneuvering system. So, yeah, that's why it's useful. Anyway, there's the sun, so we want to want to be facing the sun, don't we? So let's get into a position and then face the sun, and then take a nice screenshot. There we go. Now we can get back in, turn on the heads-up display again. And uh, maybe time warp round and try and bring ourselves back down close to the space center. Because um, that's always a good idea. Makes recovery a lot easier. On the dark side now. And uh, I think if we, if we do this, there's, yeah, okay, here we go. So we can see all our orbital information, which is always useful. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try and bring us down to the surface with this RCS. So let me just go backwards, turn on the RCS, and hit H. And that's going to slow us down very, very slowly. 
I'm actually going to go into physical time warp to do this a bit quicker because we do have plenty of RCS fuel to do this with so we can bring our orbit down so that we'll come down next to the KSC and that is the Kerbal Space Center not the Kennedy Space Center um, uh, we're not in the realism overhaul realism overhaul does actually make it the Kennedy Space Center because you get the real Earth which is one of the coolest things about it in my opinion okay so now you can see we're coming down in the ocean somewhere over here the other thing I'm gonna do is burn a bit north because I want to come down right next to the KSC and the KSC if you can see is on that red dot there and our orbital inclination has meant that we don't actually go there so I'm gonna burn north a little bit and we should be starting to get into the atmosphere now as well so our altitude is about 60 kilometers up and yeah we're definitely in the atmosphere now so we're going to have to stop burning and everything, turn off SAS, let the atmosphere control us, um, and yeah, now it's probably a good time to hope that the re-entry, um, the heat shield, sorry, works. So let's keep our fingers crossed, we can close this window if we need to, we don't need that really either. And now we're going to start to really feel the atmosphere. So I'm going to do this at one time speed so you guys can see what's going on. So I'm being pointed in that direction by the atmosphere, but I can still adjust a bit because we've got the reaction wheels, obviously. And we're not really going to start slowing down yet. That'll start to happen soon, though. And you can see the temperature is going up on the heat shield. And the ablative shield there, actually this might already have, yeah, this already has a heat shield built into it, this pod, but that doesn't really matter. Um, the ablative shielding is going down um, and ablative shielding is basically the shielding on the pod actually evaporates um, and it evaporates to cool the rest of it down so that the hot stuff evaporates off and the rest of it gets cooled down by the evaporation anyway you can see we're really heating up now this is but this is actually decreasing in temperature which means we're slowing down enough that it's not actually still heating up and uh, yeah, when we haven't activated the parachute yet because it would set on fire, that's why, if you're wondering. And we're coming down in the ocean just off KSC, so I'm pretty happy with that. There's the island right there. And in real life, I think they only deploy the parachutes at a few thousand meters up um, because you're still going too fast and they'd cause too much g-force and things if you deployed them not that high up. You can see the clouds as well, they look kind of cool. That's the environmental visual enhancements. I didn't mention that one, I don't think, before. Um, but I added that mod. Or I've had that mod for the whole time. Um, because I just think it look, makes it look a bit nicer. Adds that little bit of realism to it. It doesn't really change the gameplay at all. So I'm going to go ahead, split that decoupler, split that, um, sorry, split that heat shield off because we don't really need it anymore. It sticks there because it's still generating enough drag that it's, you know, not falling straight down. Which again, is something that Ferrum Aerospace has probably made happen because if that wasn't the case, if it wasn't done, if the drag wasn't done by surface area, then this would just fall down. Um, but it is done by surface area, so it's not falling down. But it will now. There we go. And it will go splash in about now. There we go. So now it's just time to hope that we don't hit the ground so hard that the RCS things get destroyed, because that would be a bit of a shame, I think. Um, and we can actually try and decelerate a bit with RCS if we want. And there we go. That turned out reasonably well. So I'd call that a pretty successful mission. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it was a bit educational as well. Um, we'll go a bit more into re-entry when we've got bigger pods coming in at faster speeds. Um, but yeah, as always, thanks for watching and have a nice day.